Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Philip Blackett here, here with another new episode of Life in the NBA. Hope you enjoy yourself. Hope you had a great weekend, and hope you're getting your week started right. Hopefully, this podcast can help you do just that, actually. So, here's the thing. So, we got a lot to cover here, and I definitely want to get started. But before we do, as always, I want to be able to, first off, be able to share with people who have not listened to this podcast before, just exactly what is life in the NBA and why is this a podcast worth you listening to? So long story short, Life in the NBA is a podcast that's done every week where I basically share with you the good, bad, and sometimes the ugly about being an MBA student here in business school, particularly at Harvard Business School, where I'm a first year student here. Practically in my last six or seven weeks here in my first year, uh, we definitely will be doing this into our second year. So our second season of Life in NBA will continue this August. Uh, but essentially, we're doing this podcast for two reasons. One, um, being able to share with family and friends what's going on with me. It's a lot easier for me to record a podcast for about 20, 25 minutes and be able to share with you what's going on, as opposed to being able to do that in multiple phone conversations on a Sunday night. Um, and then two, more importantly, I would say, for those people that are interested in business school, maybe those for who are interested in Harvard Business School for in particular, um, for me, when I was in your shoes, um, unfortunately, there wasn't a podcast or some sort of source or resource out there that I could basically listen to uh, a current student's experience in business school. You know, oftentimes you get alumni, you get admissions counselors, you get you know, marketing material, you got poets and quads, you got these newsletters, all these sources, but you don't really get a current student's take. Um, and mind you, this is just one perspective out of over 1800 perspectives. So take it the way you want to be taken. Um, this is definitely not the official version um, of HBS or Harvard Business School. This is just one person's perspective, but hopefully that's one more perspective that'd be helpful for you much better than zero perspectives on what life is like in business school. So being able to share with you, if, particularly if you're looking into business school, regardless of which school, um, or even if you're looking at HBS in general. And like I said before, we like to basically do our podcast in about 20 minutes or less. Um, as we get towards the end of this first some, uh, first year, it seems like we're going to be more and more on time, maybe a little bit early when it comes to our 20-minute time limit, because I literally take my time limit off my iPhone that I'm looking at right now and set my timer right at 20 minutes. So let me just go on, get that taken care of so we can go and get started. Um, so, yep, timer's up. It's ready to go. So, essentially, what happened this week? A number of things happened that I wanted to share with you about. One of the things I'm most excited about <clears throat> is that the trailer for our HBS show this year just came out um, about a few days ago. Now, for those people who have been listening in to past episodes, you can probably recall that one of the reasons why I wanted to go to HBS in general was to be a part of the HBS show. And thankfully, I was able to do that in my first year. Um, got a really cool role that I'm playing um, in this show. And I'm finally able to share with you uh, what the theme is. Um, the best way to really get a gist of what the theme is is just to go to YouTube, um, type in HBS show, preferably HBS show 2015. And then you should be able to see a trailer on there, which basically is telling you the theme. Spoiler alert. <laughs> it's um, Harry Potter and the Class Card of Secrets. Um, you can also look that up on YouTube as well and you'll be able to see the trailer. Um, you'll likely see a familiar face and probably hear a familiar voice as well. If you can pay attention to the, what I'm saying on this podcast right now, you probably can tell um, by looking at the trailer that there's a voice you can recognize, which is actually mine. <laughs> um, doing the voiceover for the trailer was a really cool experience to me. As I probably told you before, uh, speaking is something that I definitely see as a huge part of my career going forward. Not sure exactly what entails, um, but public speaking, voiceovers, um, a number of different uses or, or possibilities come to mind. And so being able to be a part and contribute to the trailer to help make the trailer what it is was definitely a fun experience I had earlier this week. And um, now it's just basically... The secret's out, you know, as far as what our theme is going to be. Um, we literally are going to be doing our show at a, next Monday. Um, that's when we start. So we're literally within two weeks away. Um, so you can already tell what this week is going to be about, you know, just kind of cut to the chase on next on this week. Um, basically, the name of the game is Tech and Dress Rehearsal. 
Uh, basically, when I'm finished with class, <laughs> we're great, basically getting back into the studio, back in the auditorium, and we're preparing for next week's show. So that's going to really be the gist of what my week is going to be like. It's just class and HBS show and any other time I have to maybe work out or catch up with people or, you know, do some reading or a couple other things that now are more of a priority with me. And I'll probably get to that a little bit later towards the end. It has a lot to do with the theme of this podcast, my cup runneth over. Um, And it's not just because it's Easter Sunday as I'm doing this podcast, but we'll get to that in a little bit. So stay tuned. Um. So, yeah, so basically HBS show coming up in less than two weeks. The trailer is out. Uh, Definitely go to YouTube. Look up HBS show 2015. You'll definitely see what the theme is about. And uh, hopefully you enjoy the trailer as well as so many other people have done as well. So what else happened? So the one of the big things that, you know, you likely experience in business school, uh, especially if you're involved in clubs and organizations is leadership transition especially if you're running for or you've been selected for a leadership role for next year, your second year, your final year of business school. And as I said to you before, I've had the great privilege of being able to serve as co-president of the Social Enterprise Club for next year. And so a lot of what's going on there is really just working on transition work. Right now, it's um, earlier this week, we got to meet with the um, the team from the Social Enterprise Initiative over lunch, me and my co-president, Kate. Um, and then the bulk of this past week was really just focused on recruiting our leadership team. You know, one of the things I really liked about having this opportunity was really not so much just to improve my own leadership skills, but really to work with a team, to, to build a team, uh, to work with a co-president, to know what that experience is like, and to lead one of arguably the largest organizations at HBS um, for next year and, and really understand what that entails, really what that involves and see how we can, you know, do things well and, and even improve from, from this past year. And so that's definitely been a highlight for me. I know for me, that's going to be one of my main priorities going to EC year or elective curriculum year for my second year here, um, as far as co-president of the SEC, um, along with my startup in particular. Um, so it's one of those things that for me, one of the differences I can already tell you is that the responsibilities and the organizations and the roles and activities, you know, all that sort that I took a part in my first year, um, more than likely that's going to start to, um, I wouldn't say drop because it has a bad connotation to it, but what I will say is we're going to cut things down a little bit. We're going to focus a lot more. We're going to focus more on depth than breadth. Maybe that's not, that's a better way of putting it. You're going to put more focus on a few things and do them really, really well, as opposed to doing well a number of things. Um, so that's really kind of the tale of this story for next year in, in particular. Um, really just kind of focusing on how do we help build our team. I'm happy to say at this point we have our leadership team pretty much selected. And so now we're just moving on to the next step as far as onboarding our leadership team, um, getting our new leadership team together with the transitioning leadership team as far as those that are outgoing. And um, basically from there, be able to start planning for next year and, and, you know, plan a retreat for the new leadership team, get a chance to get to know each other outside of work and and really kind of build from there. And like I said before, from a leadership standpoint, that's definitely something as far as why I wanted to go to business school in particular, uh, let alone HBS, uh, to really build on that. And so this would be a great opportunity. I definitely, definitely encourage you if you're thinking about taking on leadership roles within clubs and organizations in business school to really consider that. Um, one of the things I've, I've realized, um, and this kind of goes to the not so good aspect of business school, I've kind of realized maybe this is the case in other schools, but I've kind of noticed it here. This is not me on a soapbox. This is just me kind of observing things. Um, so take of it what you will. Um, but one of the things I've kind of realized is one of the things that kind of bothers me a little bit is it and maybe this is just the difference between graduate school and college and college and high school but i don't see as much involvement or eagerness to take on leadership roles uh, among our current you know class um as i thought it would be you know i think maybe my expectation of going to somewhere like hbs was that these are very much you know very ambitious type a personalities that really are go-getters and really, you know, seize the opportunity to um, find ways to improve themselves, to contribute, to serve, to lead, um, all those great things. 
And I'm not saying that that's not the case at all. What I do notice though is that it's not as many people, I'll say, um, as I would have anticipated. And maybe it's the case I was talking to another co-president of a different organization earlier tonight about it. And maybe that's just kind of different where in college it might have been different where a lot of people were into it. And even more so in high school, where a lot of people were definitely going for it, maybe for different reasons. Right. Um, but it's just something I notice. And, and like I said before, like regardless of where you apply for school, um, you really consider what you want your role to be. And maybe that might be the point where it's like some people, you know, just playing devil's advocate here, you know, trying to look at things from the other side. Um, maybe it might be the case that some people, they say, you know what, Philip, I'm perfectly content taking classes, uh, socializing with my friends and, um, you know, maybe doing a club or here or there, but not being too committed. You know, just want to really have a lot more flexibility with my schedule, not be too tied down, so to speak, quote unquote, um, with certain commitments or certain responsibilities. And that may be the case. And I can respect that. I mean, everybody has a right to have their own MBA experience. And so that's definitely this is definitely not me like condemning or criticizing anything. This is just a simple observation. Um, and everybody, like I said before, um, should make the NBA experience what they will, because obviously they're definitely paying for it. And more than likely at the same time, this is something where after two years is like, this is something you want to look back on and have no regrets. You know, you want to be able to look at this, um, essentially with a smile on your face, uh, see this as two years well spent, not just financially. Right. But more so in a sense, well invested in yourself. And um, that kind of alludes to something else I'll talk about later on as well. But I'll just say that and just kind of get off my piece on that. It's just an observation where essentially if you are into uh, different clubs and organizations for your um, your school, definitely would encourage you if you are wanting to contribute and leave a lasting impression. Uh, definitely think about contributing uh, from a leadership role your second or final year in school. So what else happened? Um so for me, like I said before, the other major responsibility or commitment I'll have into next year is my startup. A number of great things happen during this week. Um, a number of things to follow up on. Um, very much looking forward to some of these activities. But one, one thing I will talk about real briefly is, you know, the Innovation Lab had a sales and marketing roundtable where essentially uh, over pizza, uh, a number of student entrepreneurs got together and uh, all around the topic of sales and marketing, we had a guest speaker. Um, who's an entrepreneur um, in the local area. And basically we asked about, you know, certain questions about how to go to B2B sales or business to business sales. We covered a number of things as far as uh, investors, how to start doing business to business sales, what sales metrics to look at, you know, what customer relationship management software to, to get uh, just a number of different things. I think the reason why I'm sharing this is for people that are into entrepreneurship, in particular with sales or business to business, it's one of those things that you always want to be open to different events where you get to meet other entrepreneurs and especially those that are a little bit further than you as far as development um, and just the whole collaborative notion. And that was one of the things that attracted me to HBS or business school in general, as far as the schools I applied to. Uh, I wanted that sort of community that allowed me to network and fellowship and share best practices and eat pizza and have fun and get to know other people and share, you know, different tips and strategies to help each other out. It's, I like that atmosphere because oftentimes when you're into entrepreneurship as well, highly regarded and quote unquote sexy and and well regarded, you know, as it may be by other people, especially MBA students around here. Um, there's definitely a flip side and oftentimes it's not often talked about because we don't want to talk about the bright side. We want to talk about the glorious side. We want to talk about raising $18 million in seed capital round or being able to go public or, you know, being your own boss and all those sort of things. And there's always a price to pay on the other side. And oftentimes there is a factor when it comes to entrepreneurship where you can actually take on a lonely pursuit, um, especially um, if you are a solo founder. And I think one of the things I love about the Innovation Lab here at school is that it brings people together, where you, whether you're in teams or you're running solo, that doesn't make it feel like you're on your own. That doesn't make it feel like you're kind of the weird kid in class where everyone's talking about which company they're going to work for. And you're the one that says, well, I'm working on a startup. And 
some of them understand it and some of them don't, you know, it's good to be in a community that embraces what you're going after, um, that understands what you're going through. Um, and it's supportive in what you're trying to pursue. And so I think that's one of the things that regardless of what school you're looking into, look for communities that really can embrace you for who you are and what you're trying to pursue and what's important to you. And uh, that's definitely something that's always very helpful when it comes to that sort of thing. Um, excuse me, I was just checking my phone again. Um, got a f- seven minutes. Uh, still a lot to, to cover. And plus, I got to get to the topic, the uh, uh, topic du jour <laughs> for the podcast episode. Um, so real quickly, what I'll talk about is just some shout outs. One shout out to my section, section B for a great win uh, and the semifinals for our intramural basketball uh, tournament. We're now off to the championship this week. Uh, I'm betting that we're going to take it, um, but don't want to count our ducks in a row before they hatch or maybe eggs before they hatch or something like that. I'm not sure. Anyways, I don't want to take it for granted. I don't want to assume anything. You know, we obviously want to do our very, very best going into this to to bring the championship home like we did with flag football, I believe, as well. Um, so this is one of those things that, you know, there's a lot of section pride and, and, you know, the SA Cup or the Intramural Cup is still at stake. We're number one in our section for RC. Um, for our RC class, but we want to make sure that we stay ahead um, as the school year starts to wind down. So definitely looking forward to the championship game later on this week. Another thing that goes with leadership transition, um, your last few meetings. So like with the African-American Student Union, I had my last marketing slash social media meeting um, this past week, basically um, capping off the year, seeing what things we achieved, what we accomplished, uh, great year overall. And uh, being able to hand the reins over to next year's uh, marketing team so they can take over from there and hopefully give them a lot of room and a good place for them to start as far as planning for next year. And then lastly, um, shout out to my section as well for doing a think and drink earlier where we started to do reflections on our first year. I mean, obviously, with six weeks, about six or seven weeks left in the school year, um, this is probably going to fly by really fast. And sooner or later, you know, we're going to wake up and we're going to be preparing for finals. And then after finals, we're going to move out and then we start our whole summer. So it's one of those things oftentimes, you know, this is part of the reason why I do the podcast is really just to be able to take time to reflect. Um, just to share what things you, you've learned, what things you would do better on, what things you would pass advice to for others. Um, this is a great time to do that and definitely learn some things from that think and drink. One of which I'll actually take on or plan to take on for next year, where essentially, um, doing something as simple as every day, writing one thing you might've learned, maybe a sentence or two. One thing you took away, what was the main takeaway you took on for that day? Um, And, you know, it's one thing for me to do it weekly on podcasts for about 20, 25 minutes. But I think that to complement the podcast I'm doing already my first year and also will continue to do my second year, something I want to take on is be able to just write real simple every day, um, just a major takeaway or lesson learned. Um, that I have for that day. And that way I'll be able to look back when I graduate next May and be able to see all the thing, all the lessons learned uh, from a whole year, my second year. And that's definitely something I would recommend to other people going to business school. I mean, they actually made that recommendation for your first year, but since my first year is practically almost gone, almost done with, um, that's definitely something I would share and recommend for you when you start your first year, or if you happen to be a second year coming up next year, like me, um, maybe you should consider doing this your second year as well. And then um, the very last thing was just finishing up um, my last weekend of Catapult, where basically uh, it's formerly known as Ashoka's Catapult, but basically um, being able to serve in a high school incubator for high school students that want to go into entrepreneurship. I've had the privilege of serving as an advisor for not one, but two um, high school teams this this past um, this year. Um, we're basically we're preparing for demo day and um, shout outs to those two teams in particular, you scan technologies and land me. Um, where essentially they're preparing, I'm sure they're preparing right now, last minute preparations for demo day for them tomorrow. Unfortunately, I won't be able to attend because I have class during that time, but I definitely send my well wishes, my best wishes to both of them for great presentations. Uh, we had a great couple of days working on pitches and stories and feedback and that sort of thing, just preparing them for this big day coming up. So uh, definitely 
I'm hoping for the best for those two and we'll be thinking about them while I'm in class tomorrow. And so lastly, what about three minutes left? <laughs> Jesus, not a lot of time, but we'll make, see if we make it work. Um, with this being Easter Sunday, um, I think one of the big things I wanted to share, um, just continue to share reflections as I continue to grow and mature from my first year. And I think one of the big things I want to talk about that's in line with my cup run of over is there is a strong desire I've learned in some sense, the hard way. I don't have enough time to go into detail, but essentially the importance of putting yourself first. And I know I may have talked about this in, po- in past podcast episodes where business school could be a time where you really should put yourself first and, you know, maybe be even a selfish time to really kind of do things that you really want to do um, and, and be able to do that. In a sense, for two years, you can really do that before you go back out in the real world and you really you know, kind of encompass yourself around helping others as well, or, or the responsibilities beyond just yourself. And I think for me, I think one of the things I've learned this past weekend, like I said, don't have time to really go into it, but essentially, um, it made me remember one of the lessons my mom used to drill in my head. Uh, when I was little, she always asked me, what's the first rule. And the first rule for her was, you know, she wanted me to learn was take care of yourself. Because if you can't take care of yourself first, how can you possibly truly take care of others? And I think oftentimes I sometimes get those rules mixed up and I can be very giving, very caring, very um, selfless, um, looking out for other people and going out on a limb, going extra mile for others um, to make sure that they're okay. Make sure that they feel cared for, they feel loved, they feel appreciated. And sometimes I can come at the expense of myself. And sometimes that could be in a sense where I don't put as much effort um, towards making sure I'm okay because I'm sort of making a bet that the other person will do the same. And sometimes that's the case. Sometimes that's not. And so one of the things I've learned um, just from my own study, um, when it comes to my cup run of over, sometimes you have to fill your cup up first. And while in the process of filling up your cup, making sure your needs are met, making sure that you're taken care of, making sure your dreams and desires are taken care of and what you're trying to pursue and, you know, what goals you may have. Eventually, you're going to pour enough into your cup that it starts to run over and what run overs from that cup goes off to other people. And that's a good analogy for me going forward to be able to understand um, what's important and what's important is more so in the sense of being able to make sure I'm good, make sure I'm going after, you know, what's important to me, what my dreams are, um, what goals I have, certain objectives I have, like, you know, taking back up um, uh, learning French and Spanish, because the more I start to think about, for example, where I want to be um, post school is more likely going to be in the South. Um, There's three states in particular. Uh, Texas, Florida, and North Carolina that really are like the forerunners in this. And more than likely, in any of those states, particularly the first two, it probably would help for me to have a good handle on Spanish. I also want to keep up on French because I've learned that for so many years. But that's something I've been putting on the back burner for quite a while. And honestly, I need to take some time to take that back up um, just for me. Another thing is being able to read a book that has nothing to do with business school uh, each week. Uh, starting Good Friday, I was able to do that for one book. And this week, I'm going to start up on another one. There's more examples of that. I definitely wrote a list out on that. But I'm basically sharing this with you with practically time up at this point. Um, being able just to share, look, you know, this is part of my own reflections. This is part of my own growth, my own maturity um, of how I'm growing things. And sometimes you learn it the easy way. Sometimes you learn it the hard way. But more than likely, as long as you learn the lesson, then it's not a wasted time not a wasted day, not a wasted event. Um, So I think for me, this is one of those things that, you know, I take on that analogy more so making sure I'm taking care of myself where I need to go as far as academically, socially, physically, mentally, spiritually, um, emotionally, all of these different things academically. um, Who knows? It's just like covering all the bases and believing that when you're in a position where you can take care of yourself, um, believing that 
by you continuing to invest in yourself, you're now in a better position to invest in others. You're now in a better position to be in a better relationship with your family, your friends, your loved ones, your significant other later on. Um, you're in a better position to be a better co-president. You're in a better position to become a better founder. You're in a better position to become a better volunteer. You're in a better position to become a better person overall to others. And so I think that's a good notion for me to take up on. Um, you may agree with it. You may not. That's perfectly within your own jurisdiction, your own prerogative. But this is what works for me. And I'm just sharing that with you as a part of the fact that, you know, in business school, you are going to grow outside of class, just like I talked about last week. And if you don't find yourself growing outside of class, you're actually missing out. So hopefully by sharing this lesson, maybe this might be something that speaks to you. Maybe this speaks as a reminder when you think about business school to always be open to what lessons you can learn outside of the classroom as well. And so with that being said, we are absolutely out of time. So with that being said, as I said before, the <laughs> alarm clock was kind of loud, but um, we're essentially out of time. And so with that being said, thank you so much for listening in on this week of life in the NBA. Um, if you like this episode and want to stay tuned for future episodes, head on over to our website, www.lifeinthembea.com, www.lifeinthembea.com. There you can subscribe for free for future episodes. Stay up to date with what's going on on a week by week basis. We'll be here next week, next Sunday for another new episode of Life in the NBA. And while you're at it, uh, head on over to iTunes as well. You can be able to download all of our episodes, be able to listen to them whenever you need to, uh, whether you're on the go in the car or, or babysitting or walking a dog or who knows what you're doing. Um, but just be able to download it wherever you are just to make sure you stay on, t- on top of what's going on. And um, definitely appreciate you continuing to listen, especially those who have been listening to more than one episode. I definitely appreciate um, you listening. I definitely appreciate you referring this to other people, especially those applying to business school. Uh, Definitely, definitely, definitely appreciate your support as we head into the end of our first season and the start of our second season next August. So, as I said, with that being said, this is Philip Blackett signing off for Life in the NBA. Thank you again for listening in. Stay tuned for next week's episode of Life in the NBA. Head on over to iTunes and lifeinthenba.com to subscribe and download our episodes. And I'll see you from here. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you later.